All right, guys, thanks for joining me. Exciting day today. We're starting the layout work for the butler's pantry, which is gonna be an internal wall coming through here and over there. And we're using all the tech that I have at my disposal, the Milwaukee laser, and I'm even using my thermal monocular, my hunting thermal monocular, which we'll show you later how that comes into play and really made life a lot easier for me. All right, stay tuned, it's gonna be great. All right, so what we've been doing is, I've been marking out on the floor <coughs> where my uh, uh, bottom plates for my stud, my stud work's gonna go. This is just so to give me a visual representation of where things are gonna lay out because um, no sooner I almost started this, the missus has thrown me a curveball and said, hmm, why don't we do a cutout here to allow for a, uh, we've got a hall table over there that used to be over here <coughs> against the little dwarf wall we had there, which I've since removed. <coughs> so because we can't put it here anymore because the couch is basically going to sit where it is now and that allows access through here to the curtains and PowerPoint down the back there or whatnot. So can't put it there. We've sat it there, but I really hate it where it is here because I keep running it, walking into it in the, at night. So it looks like we've got a sort of a natural cutout here with this sort of feature pillar. So what's gonna happen is we're going to just do some stud work to pull that out to that line. And then it'll come across to here and we'll create another one of those pillars, which is this little rectangle you can see on the floor there. And that's just a little bit shorter than 400 deep. So if we push it up against the plaster in here, it should be inside this tile line, which is what we want, even though all there will get it, get tiled, but it will sit inside this line so it won't restrict, it won't protrude as we're walking past, if you know what I mean. So we won't run into it. We may even put a down light in the top to shine down on it, something like that. We'll see what happens. But right now, yeah, layout, so, um, We'll just turn the laser on here because it's set up. And then we'll just put that on. And that one on. Okay. So this is how I got my dating point. I started off from this wall here and I measured out the 400 I needed, which would get me to the plaster. On, that's going to be on this wall and then I added 10 mil which gave me where my stud stud wall is going to be across and that brought me down to here and obviously I was moving the laser back and forth this um, this particular line here was moved back and forth to get these ones there actually I started with this point here but how did I get this, know how far out I was going? Well, I know I wanted, from plaster to plaster, I wanted two metres internally. So from that wall there to this, um, well, we actually got to go further in there. It's more, <clears throat> the internal wall is going to end somewhere around here because that's, where the stud is going to start 90 mil over and then plus 10 mil will put me around here somewhere for the internal wall. But that's not really, um, I don't really need to lay that out. I only need the outer dimensions because that's that's where things, um, yeah, well, I just pushed my stud out to that line and I know 
everything inside of that is going to line up because I've measured to the outer width, if you know what I mean. But that's what we use the laser for. But before I use the laser, I had to look at the ceiling because I've got to run a top plate because I need something to fix the top of my studs to. And my roof truss, they run in this direction. So they'll be running parallel with the wall that I'm building, which was really inconvenient for me. If they ran that way, it would have been really convenient because I could have just measured out for each roof truss and then nailed the top plate of my stud wall into the roof truss. But because they run parallel, it was gonna make it quite difficult for me. So what did I do? Well, initially I thought I was going to have to place noggins between the, uh, the two roof trusts and that would give me, um, or space them out at stud widths and that would give me somewhere to nail my top plate into. But <clears throat> a little bit of thinking and procrastinating and I came up with a little better idea. Because um, I didn't know where the, where the roof truss ran, I would, I would have normally had to go into the roof somewhere over near this part here and remove a tile, follow the truss down and then sort of mark it out and measure from one point back to the nearest wall to find out where the, the nearest truss was when I came inside here. Or measured out from this window back towards the truss, something like that anyway. But uh, then I thought, oh, I'll just use a stud finder and I'll find it with the stud. But... I don't know about you guys, but stud finders are not the most accurate. They can pick up anything because they're only, they work on density. And um, if you have something dense in there, it'll pick that up. And it may be the edge of the, the trust or stud, but then again, it might not be. So I actually remember I was playing around with my, this is a night tech thermal monoculator. I use it for hunting. It's nearly not that great for up close, but um, I was far enough away that it, it did work for this. So what I did was I turned this on <clears throat> and these things are amazing. We'll just give it a chance to boot up. Okay, now I've actually got my video, my phone camera, looking through my monocular. I know it's not ideal, but you'll get the general idea. So now I've got it pointed up at the ceiling and uh, just trying Alright, so there's the stud wall. And now I'm pointing up the ceiling and you see the black line in the ceiling, right? The little round bright circle is the, my heating vent, which is why that's white, because white is actually hot. And so you see the black lines? The black lines are the studs because they're colder because they don't absorb the heat as much as the plaster does. So that's where my stud is. And see how it comes right down where I'm gonna build my wall. And how I found that was, um, I got my wife to hold a straight edge up the wall until it butted up with that black line that we're seeing there. And if you look to the sides, you can see all the lines. See the, the whole framework, the one going in a diagonal down there. It's very faint, but it looks better, clearer through. You can see it on the wall, all the studs on the wall, through the plaster over there. And it works better with the heater on because the heater heats up the plaster 
and then you see the cold of the stud behind it. So that's how I use the monocular to find the roof trust. And we just put a straight edge and then I marked it on the those noggins, which is where the the end of my stud wall is going to be attached to. Right, there we go. A lot easier than climbing up on the roof and trying to work out where it is. All right. About the start. Um, I've done all my markings yet. They're a bit faint and probably in the camera, but uh, we've done our little feature here where I'm going to start out and it's across there and I sort of worked out where this inlay is going to be a little cut out for that hall table that's over there so that's all worked out but I um, still do need to cut through that bit of plaster in the corners up there to allow my stud wall room for my stud wall as you see I've marked out where my stud's going to go and then I've marked out the extra 10 mil I need to cut for that bit of plaster uh, to allow for the, the receiving piece of plaster. And the same on this side. And then I'll also need to uh, remove this middle strip on the corner here because it's going to probably make it uh, very thick and I can't sand it to match because of the steel. I'll have to remove that and then plaster probably a section that I remove here because this wall is going to continue out to match the new wall coming out. Because initially I was going to bring it out straight from here, but because I have to come out deeper now if, to allow room for that hall table, I'm going to have to remove this section so then I can have room to sand it down and I won't be exposing the middle external corner. It's on this, uh, you'll find it as a middle corner, 25 mil by 25 mil probably. So that'll have to come off. And then we can butt it up and we'll have to do a paper joint there. And that will be like a normal butt joint there. So that needs, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm about to start doing that. And then I'll come back and I'll do this. Let's get into it. Get some plaster in there. I may need just to take a little bit more to clear side on that one. Alright, back soon. Okay, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but I'll come in a bit closer. As you see, like I've scored a line all the way down this corner because there's paper tape, corner tape in there, so I need to cut that through that paper. I need to get rid of this bit of plaster. Um, I thought I might as well because I've got to remove this section anyway. So while this is coming off, I'll probably end up taking the whole lot off off together anyway. So I've done a nice cut all the way to the top corners, down at the bottom floor there, and I've marked with the straight edge a line here. And I might just put the straight edge and I'll slightly score the paint. And then I'll go freehand and try and cut through the actual plaster and um, 
hopefully after that we can just pull off this corner might not come off in one piece because no doubt there's a few screws in there or nails I uh, possibly glue to um, so but we'll, we'll see what happens so, to know how much this corners I have to remove um, I've just turned the laser on and I'm lining it up with the line of bottom plate for the internal wall side um, and then I'll have a straight line to put my straight edge against to mark it so I know exactly how far I have to come with the removal of that cornice up there. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm just going to line the laser up with the line on the floor. You probably won't be able to see it. Um, so I'm just going to put a line there. We've got our line to mark to and just a sort of a reference point for the, that's the end of where the studs are going to go to come this way. So it gives me something to line up against to as well, a visual reference. So now I'll get that vibrating tool and I'll just put a slit through there and I'll remove that portion of the cornice. I have to remove this plaster because when I put my 90 by 45 stud work in here, it's sitting out proud of the original studs. So I need that extra 10 mil. So this plaster has got to go and I've basically just cut it out to where the original studs, uh, where the stud wall is going to finish on for the inside of the butlers. And you won't see any of that anyway, but the, this side gets covered with plaster again. Forty-five mil coming out there, so I'll stick it at around one fifty, and then I'll go every nine hundred from that mark, as long as I'm off my stud mark. So we're going to go in the centre of there of that stud, which is about probably twenty-five mil. Give or take, and we'll be at 450, and then we'll be at 900. So, if we start from there, we will always be out of the line of a stud. I might as well mark out my studs. Now, I've measured just past the uh, 
The fluting of the drill is my 100 mil depth and I've got 100 mil um, screws just past the fluting and I'll be deep enough. All right, we've got our bottom plate bolted down to the slab. It's at right angle to our outer wall here. Um, little bit of an issue with that. First hole I drilled, I've hit Rio in the slab because I just wouldn't wouldn't drill down any further. So I, uh, I've uh, re-drilled it a little bit further out and then continued along. Um, so it's all all good now. That's nice and solid on there down. So we're now the plan is we'll put a stud up against this wall. And then, and I'll leave a gap, enough gap at the top to slide the top plate in. So uh, that way I have something to rest it on uh, while I try and fix it to the ceiling at the other end. And once it's fixed up this end, it's just a matter of nailing along just for a bit more support. And that'll be going into the roof trust, as you can see. And up there, that is the trust. And uh, we found that by using my thermal monocular. And uh, yeah, it was pretty much on the money. I knew I was gonna be a little bit further over to the right of it, but that's okay. We'll just measure the distance from the edge of the, uh, the stud that I put up here. I'll measure the, from the edge to over, and then I'll know exactly where, how far from the inside of the wall edge to nail it so I don't go too far off and miss the actual trust. Because I can't nail down into the studs, so um, I'm going to have to nail the top plate into the trust and then I'll, then I'll give it the wall stability at the top as well. Well, I'll keep going into it and um, we'll come back and show the progress. Cheers. All right, so here we are. I'm about to, I've been marking out for the top plate. As you can see, the laser's in position. And the way I'm double checking that is I line the laser up. with the center of the rafter up there. As you can see conveniently, it lines up with the plaster screw there that's exposed. And as you can see, we're slightly off center to this stud, but that's not a problem. And then what I did was, I measured, I measured the distance I had between the edge of the stud here and the laser line. And I kept adjusting the laser until I had the same distance at this end. And that says to me, I've got a parallel line. And theoretically, that rafter should be at right angle to that wall, theoretically. But I didn't quite trust the builders because I have seen some not so plumb work already. So what I did then was I turned the heater on and I used the thermal and I marked the line. And I'll turn the laser off now so you can see the line. Marked the line on the ceiling there. Okay, and I also marked the line on the timber there, there, and down here. So now, and then I got a piece of timber and I had my wife hold the timber parallel with one side of the timber against that line. And then through my thermal monocular, with the heater on, I can see the timber, because I can't see the line through the thermal, I can only see heat 
signatures and that line doesn't give off a heat signature the plaster it's on does so with the timber there on that line that gives me a heat signature line and I see the tim the rafter uh, next to it through the thermal is darker because it's colder so um, that tells me whereabouts that line is in relation to my trust running underneath the plaster and lo and behold I mean the thermal isn't exact but even through the thermal I could tell that the rafter is actually um, a little off to the left of where that line that should be the center and it's actually a little bit off to the left so as I come down this screwing the top plate in I will start when I get to the center, I will start screwing in to the left of the line. Or maybe not the center, maybe about three quarters of the way down. I will start screwing to the left of the laser line so I get more trust that way. So that's how I, I did it. So once I um, put the top plate up there, I'm gonna rest it up here. On that edge and then I'm gonna I've already cut a stud there for me end so I'll rest it on that stud and then we'll lift it up and use this one it's a nice neat fit against the ceiling here and that'll hold it up and then we'll just position it as need be and then I can start screwing it in I'll bring the laser in and I'll put it in the center here and I'll pick up the lines that I've put on the timber because I won't be able to do it from where it is now because the timber will be blocking the laser from coming inside. So I'll bring it in here and I'll line it up with that mark and the mark down the other end and that'll give me a 360. So it'll line, a line will go on the inside of the, the top plate and that's that'll give me my um, line to screw to. Alright, so we're plumbing with our laser from bottom to the top, and we're plumbing with our laser from the bottom edge to the top edge, and that's all we need. Now we can screw this into position and uh, start installing the internal studs. Alright, so we've got our laser lining all lined up in this plane and we know that this one is plumbed with this one so now I've moved my laser to the inside of the stud and I've lined it up with a line that I've got right there and I've got another line down this end right there Okay, so now that projects a line on the top of the timber and I know through my thermal lining up that that's where the truss runs and you know, we've already chucked the nail in there, got one in there, we've just got another couple to do. So I'll do them now. And now, just a matter of lining up our rear. And so, just put a block on the inside here. And that way, cut a couple of nails in that, they'll stay into there. And then when I skew nail up from here, they'll stop that moving in like that. Oh. And before we fix the bottom, we'll check that the actual stud is plumb and we're plumb. 
So now I can fix the bottom one. Once that's on, I'll start measuring where each stud goes. As I did yesterday, I marked S on a line where all my studs go, and that's the center of the stud. So I will measure each one individually because I have no reason to believe that that roof is dead level or this concrete's dead level. So we are going to get fluctuations, even if it was really well built, probably a couple of mil in between them. The um, movement over time. Quite possibly more. Yeah, or well two, this slab could have moved. The house could have skewed a little bit. It's 23 years old, so it would have... <coughs> if, would have um, expect a little bit of movement over that time. 24 years old. Well, going 24 it years is old. 24 now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 24 year old says the know it all over there. <laughs> right, so I'll get into that and then um, I'll bring you back when I'm, as I'm fitting them, I'll time lapse it just so you see the progress. I thought that was going to go on the floor, that one. There's already one on the floor. Got you. Perfect. Woohoo! How good is that? All right, as you can see, our um, <clears throat> cutting feature is starting to take shape. So 
this is the thickness of the wall. We want 200 mil, um, which we got 90 by 90 here, plus 10 mil plaster that side, 10 mil plaster that side will give us our 200 to match this one here. Okay, so it's what I've done here is the first one on the wall, I actually nailed that into the uh, trust, but there is no trust on this side of that uh, top plate that was nailed in. So what I did was, this is not load bearing, so, um, <clears throat> and I'm going to screw into, or nail into these ones. So they'll hold this wall this way and will also stop that from coming out because it's not attached to the top there. And um, that, that'll that hold that all in position. So I actually nailed that top plate to the studs and then slid it up into position um, to save me having to nail it from the top later or having to skew nail it from here up, which I could have done, but it's just a lot neater and I kept it, put a square on it while I was doing it. And it, as it went in, it fitted in really nicely. But we are having a little bit of an issue here now, and this is due to the timber, just a little bit of, of warpage. I mean, you can see how that one sits out, but if I pull the timber out, see, because we're actually high on this side as well. So, because we're low here, it's a bow in the timber. So I'll just push that out and have that level. I'll probably just put a noggin in here once I nail that into there, I'll put a noggin in between here and there, and that'll push that out. So I'll just make sure that that noggin is um, the right width to push that out, and that will push the whole rest of it out. There is going to have to be another uh, noggin somewhere along there anyway. But yeah, I'll use one to push it out, and then I'll measure the other ones, and that'll hold it. So... That's all good. Um, you gotta, you got to learn to to work around these sort of things. Like we picked these and you'd be amazed at how many you pick through to get a dead straight one. And they're rarely dead straight. If they're, they're straight along this edge, then they have a bit of bow that edge. Um, worst thing you don't want is, is when it twists because um, then your bottom section will be nice and plumb. But then when you get to the top, it's skewed out. And you can fix that. But, you know, if you don't have to, it's better just to get them straight. So it's easier to live with a little bit of bow, which you can work out of it. I mean, if these studs have got a bow in them, by the time I put the noggins in, I can pull it this way. And I can push it that way to um, take the bow out. So... That's how you sort of work around that. But, um, yeah. Um, yeah, the thing we're creating here now is um, we're creating a, a place to screw our plaster into that side. And now we've got somewhere to screw our plaster into there. And we've got to do something similar here. So there's going to be another stud going this way, which I'll put in first before I do a noggin for that one. So that'll create somewhere to plaster to here. And then there'll be another stud going this way to give me room to screw in to plaster from this direction. And that's how that's gonna work. And working from that wall to this way, we're due for a, a uh, stud here to get our 450 spacing right, which is why we got one there. I mean, it's a bit of a waste, but um, yeah, it's the 450 spacing. And if I didn't have it this end, I'd have it at that end. Um, look, you could take it out, but then you wouldn't have 450. You'd have, well, there's probably another 150 mil there. You'd have um, 700 nearly. Okay, so um, Yeah, that's what we're doing, and we're getting there. We'll just continue along. Uh, like I said, I'll be now. I'll be making a stud for here, 
and there and then we'll do some noggins to space that back out again all right looking good and um yeah once i sort of do this um i'll go back and noggin all them once we've done this part all right catch you soon